Father Lord, we are glad. We exalt your name this evening. We use opportunity to exalt and to honor you. Father Lord, we have come again to your presence. It is not by mind, it is not by power. It is by your spirit, O Lord God of hosts. Father Lord, you are the God that gives us hope in the midst of hopelessness. That gave us strength when we are weak. You are in our everything. Lord Jesus, we commit our ways into your hands today. We ask that your spirit speak through us. That your understanding envelop us. That we may not speak from self, but speak according to your oracle details. Teach us, O Lord, thy way. Make known to us thy path. Father Lord, as many that will come to this message, not be sure of whom they are. Father Lord, at the end of this message, you will remove every doubt. You will remove every fear from their hearts. You will grant them divine understanding. As many that come seek, let healing be their portion. As many that come to a difficult situation, O oh Lord, you promise me that the expectation of the righteous will never be cut off. Let their expectation never be cut off in Jesus' name. Amen. Brethren, we are welcome again this evening. This is the time we use our opportunity to fellowship together in our Open Heart Fellowship. This Open Heart Fellowship is a non-denominational missionary training service where we use opportunity to teach you about the truths of the Word of God and to expand the Bible in every sphere of it. To give you divine understanding and guidance of how the scriptures works and how it can empower you today. Brethren, this is another wonderful day. A day we meet together in commemoration of the gospel of truth, where we expand the truth. Later this night is our open heart fellowship, where we pray for all missionaries. We call it Tari Night. If you are chance by 11.30 to 12.30, you can join us as we pray for all missionary churches. You can also bring your prayer request. Send it to us during the message session and we will be praying together for you and for the rest of the missionaries that are serving in the Lord's Father. God bless you as you participate. Brethren, today we have another exciting topic for you. The topic is being sure. Being sure. A Christian who serve in the Lord's Vineyard must be sure of God telling him to do the right thing at the right time. So that's what we're going to be studying today. We're going to be looking at the topic, being sure. Can we be sure of our Christian belief? Can our Christian ethics supersede our belief? Today, we are going to be looking at being sure as a mix of study. So, our test is taken from the book of Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2. But today, we shall be looking at our hints in the book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, which says, I write these things unto you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know so that you may know I repeat I write these things unto you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life 1 John 5 13 that you may know you have eternal life how sure are we do we wait to die so that we can rise and sense before we are sure that we have eternal life? Or are we waiting to be confirmed that somebody, by somebody else that our Christianity is not questionable before we know we are saved? How does the just live? They just live by faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. If you come to God, you must first of all believe that God is God and He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. 
And that's what we are looking into today under the topic, being sure. If you call yourself a Christian, you must be sure that you are. You must know that you are. Without anybody telling you that you are a Christian. Yes, it is true that your Christianity is only being asserted by people around you when they see Jesus' character in you. That is when your Christianity will be noticed. But if you are truly a Christian, you should know who you are. Like a young girl in the Bible who said, Be of good cheer, sir, I believe in God. I know it shall be done unto me according to his word. Be of good cheer, I believe in God. Do you know you believe in God? Are you sure? Or you are among those who, when they are going to church, they wrap their Bible with a garment and hide it so that people will not say, Are you also among the prophets? Like the saying goes in Israel, He saw also among the prophets. Or your characteristic does not match your belief. When you are in the club, you are the highest fighter. And when you finish all the fight, people will do everything to restrain you. And they will even begin to persuade you. Don't you say you are a Christian? If you are such a person, time has come for you to desist from such things. The Bible promises us that when we believe the gospel and receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and our Lord and decide to follow him all the day of our life, then we turn from the darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God to receive forgiveness for our sin and a place among those who are sanctified by faith. But how can we be sure? That is exactly what we are looking into today. How sure are we that this gift of God actually abides in our life? Ephesians 2.1 told us that you have he quickened who we are dead in sin. As far as the world is concerned, we were unclean thing, waiting the condemnation of God. We were not supposed to have eternal life. Because eternal life is for the gift of the righteous. Who know no sin? But we were born in sin. And in sin did our mother conceive us. We were deficient from birth. Our father Abraham willingly disobeyed God. Therefore, Adam, I'm sorry, willingly disobeyed God and therefore condemns our entire generation to death. And therefore, death reigned even since Adam. But after the Christ, death no longer reigned. The kingdom of heaven is being preached. And that kingdom of heaven is what we are here to preach to you about. The Bible promises us that when we receive the gospel, we receive Jesus as our Savior. When a tract comes to your door, an evangelist knocks at your door, a letter by a missionary service are posted to you, and you accept the word of God with gladness. You welcome the word of God into your life. You practice it. You learn from it. You follow the path. The Bible says, He who look unto the law, the perfect law of liberty that set free, he is blessed if he continue. No, the truth is that we receive Christ, we are saved. But the blessing can only come if you continue. Because salvation is not a place of attempted freedom. Salvation is a place of total freedom. For you to be free, you have to make it up to your house. You cannot say to yourself, I am free in the battlefield because the enemy that will pursue me has been defeated. You might be surprised that one of the enemy that is wounded can still take up a gun and shoot at you. So is this life. You cannot actually be said to be saved until you see yourself seated with God on the last day at the right hand of the Father, waiting for your enemy to be put under your footstool. That is when your salvation is complete. Your salvation is not secure until you reach heaven. So that's why you must guide it jealously throughout your life. 
Christians must understand that salvation is fragile, just like a glass. It can be broken. It doesn't mean because you were once saved that throughout your life you are saved. No. You were saved so that you can continue to save others until you become part and parcel of God where you need no more saving. Some people say we are already saved when we accepted Christ. Yes. But something else you must understand. In the beginning, there was no death because God never created death in the earth. There was no sickness. There was no affliction. There was no pain. There is no sorrow. Somebody said, but when you wake up the dead, yes, when you wake up the dead, the dead will die again. When you heal the sick, they will get sick again. But when you are said to be saved by God, is when God returned you back to the garden. Where labors are taken away. Where you no longer need to eat by the sweat of your head. Or by the labors of your hands. Where sickness has no more dominions over you. Where death can no longer reign over your mortal body. That is when you said to have a state. What we have now is like a mirror of things to come. Raising the dead, healing the sick, casting out devils. All these are mirrors. But the perpetual one will only come when the priest of glory himself must have taken the kingdom. The Bible says he must sit at the right hand of God until all his enemy be put under his footstool. Then shall he himself be subject to the one that put all things under him. All things must need to be put under him. And he says, when I ascend on the high, there will I let captivity captive in the train. And the Bible makes us understand that the last enemy to be defeated on earth is death itself. And then when the saying comes to pass that says, O death, where is your sting? And grave, where is your victory? For the strength of death is sin. And for the strength of sin is the law. And God is making it clearer to us that today the Bible promises us that we, if we believe the gospel, and receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior and our Lord and decide to follow him all days of our lives then we turn from darkness into light except there is a decision point with faith we cannot be said to have been born again to be born again means you must have removed the Adamic nature from you through baptism and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And now, your commitment is to God. Just like the Bible said, he that is born of God cannot commit sin. Why can't he sin? It's not that he, there is no will to sin in him, because the seed of God, which is the Spirit of God, lives in him. And this point in your life, the Holy Spirit is indwelling. And this indwelling is what prepares you for the light that is to shine. And this light keeps you. The Spirit of God keeps you. That's why the Bible says to him who is able to present us perfect. He is able to present us perfect. But many we add you no man on earth is perfect. But God said he himself is able to prevent, present us perfect before the throne. You are not saved by yourself. The only reason why you decide to hear the voice of God and come to God right now is because the Father draw it you to himself. If the Father can draw you from the darkness and the shadow that cover your eyes, that make you blinded to his love, that make you blinded to his ways, that same Father is capable of preserving you from the beginning of your life to the end. Only if you believe in him. Because that's why the Bible makes us understand that the just shall live by faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. God is too big to be put in a test tube, in some laboratory, 
to figure out from archaeology. No. God is bigger than that. That's why you, as a Christian, must not try to put God in a test tube in your life or limit him to a specific room or tent or place just to feel that you know better. No. You had he quickened who were dead to trespasses. In your past, you were dead to sin. Why? Because the God of this world covered your eyes. You felt sin is the only right way. Most of us see sins as enjoyment, as a place of commitment, as a place we can only grow. Some people will say God's own is too far. I have to get it faster. And the only way to get it faster is to sin. No. God is telling you today there is an alternative. There is an alternative to you trying to get it faster. Some will tell you, I have gone too far. I don't think at this point there is no turning back. God says, have you gone as far as Saul? Saul was a persecutor of the church. When the church gathered together, he goes to lead them into prison in Jerusalem. When Stephen was being sold, being stoned to death, Saul was there. And the garment of those that stoned Stephen were laid at the stone. He was consenting to his death. But when on his way to go and slaughter the Christians in Damascus, the Lord met him. And the Lord said, it is hard for you to kick against a guard. And when Saul met with the Lord, Saul became one of the prolific teachers of the scriptures. After he has lost the right way, after his life of, his entire life of sin, wickedness, and persecution of the church, he preached to those he once persecuted. And set forth a more excellent way. And nor was he limited in any way. He was accepted as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even though he was persecuted, the said Jesus Christ. Brethren, there is no debt you have gone in life that God cannot accept you. It's only a will to return to him. It doesn't matter if your life of sin has leads to death. It has leads to confusion. It has destroyed thousands of people. But God is telling you today there is still hope. He said today if you come to him, he will quicken you in trespasses and sin. In verse 2, he makes us understand where in, in time past, you walk according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now walk in the children of disobedience. When people are disobedient, it's not them. The spirits of this world is at work in them. The spirit of nature makes them do things naturally which is repulsive even in their own eyes. It is not of their clear conscience. And that's why today you must not take offense. Because the Bible says in this end time offenses will surely come. But blessed is the man that is not offended in him. Many will be offended. They will go away and betray one another and hate one another because offenses will surely come. But today, God is telling you that there is a way out. That in the past times of your life, you walk according to the course of this world. We all walk according to the course of this world. According to the beggarly elements who controls the affairs of this world. The spirit of the prince of the air, Lucifer himself, who controls the governors and the set traps of the earth, who was in the charge of the super kingdoms in the world empire, this same Lucifer, reigns supreme over the prince of the power of the air. He is indulged in all the confusion that people go through in the world. They don't know what to do. You want to do good in your heart. You see somebody in pain, in sorrow, you want to help. But there is a conviction, an inner conviction telling you that is not the right thing to do. Why should you help this person? You should leave him. Let him suffer for himself. That is not the spirit of God. It is the spirit of the prince of the power of the air, Lucifer himself. 
that he is in charge of all those inner convictions, what you and I call common sense. He is in charge of it. He is the one that wants man to get, get knowledge of evil. Not God. God wanted man to be a loving creature. If man was having the knowledge of evil, he would not have recognized Eve. When Eve comes into the garden, Adam, who you said he did not have knowledge, before he ate the fruit of knowledge, saw the woman and said, this is the bone of my bone, and the flesh of my flesh. For this cause shall a man leave his father, and his mother cleave to his wife, and they both shall become one flesh. Can somebody that is void of knowledge ever say such a thing? Or somebody that is void of wisdom? That's why Adam was never limited in wisdom. But what he wanted is he wanted his eyes to be open to the lust of the world, to see the beauty of the flesh. He wanted his eyes to be open to sin. He wanted knowledge not of something good. He wanted knowledge of evil. That's why today when we create one good thing, we create hundred evil. Because this is the knowledge we wanted from the devil. And we have it. And that's why you do not have to blame yourself for this sin. These sins came as an inheritance to all men that lives upon the earth. There is no man that is free from it, except that man that has come to the washing fountain of the blood of Christ. We all were guilty. We all were concluded on that sin. But while we were yet sinner, Christ died for us. He did just for us, the unjust. We are in in time past, you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, and the spirit which now is at work in the spirit, in the children of wrath. Children that are preserved to suffer God's wrath. This is the spirit that walk in them. So whenever they hurt you in the street, oh, now I'm a pity for my country. A lot of Christians have been persecuted, killed on a daily basis. By these children of rot. Why are they being killed? Christians are the most peaceful people on earth. They kept the word of God. They don't take vengeance on any man. They honor the principles of law. And they don't indulge in fight. Even when the person who is fighting against them can easily be taken by them and broken into two. Yes, they will not avenge themselves. Because why? The Lord Jesus Christ told them that if their kingdom were of this world, their followers would fight. But because their kingdom is not of this world, their followers will not fight. That's why Christians do not fight and they do not avenge themselves. Because their kingdom is not of this world. But when you see a group who claim that this world is their home, this earth is their place of dwelling, the earth dwellers, they will contend for everything in the world. They contend for food, they contend for wealth, they contend for power, they contend for status, they even contend for authorities and legal rights. This is because this world is their home. They have no portion in this life. Their portion is made after the flesh. And the Lord is saying to you, you should not be part of such a group. And the Lord is telling you now that these children you see, they are the children of wrath. Children who are made to suffer his cross. This world is their hope. Do you know if you as a Christian begin to see this world as a place where you have hope, you are worst and the most miserable of men? Because what happened? In the world, you cannot do things that the unbeliever do with impunity. You cannot feast like they do. You cannot celebrate like they do. You cannot fool yourself around as they do. But if this world is the only place you have hope, you have all made the most miserable. But we have another home, which is heavenly. And that's why we labor day and night to enter in. Because the Bible says the road is narrow and the path is strict. That many will come to try, but they will not be able. 
Because bold is the way that leads to destruction. But narrow is the way that leads to life. And only few that are even on this narrow road can find it at the end. Brethren, which road would you ride again? Will you want to join the few that walk through this narrow road and walk hard to enter in? Strive to enter in. Things that are good are not always open down. Anything that looks so easy and never good. When somebody shows you a path that is so easy and they tell you, come to our core, what are the laws? He said, there is no law. Run for your life. Because there is nothing without laws that is good. There is no path in life that leads up that doesn't have restriction. Every path that leads up in your life more have some specific restriction attached to it. And to make it clearer to you here, that among whom also we all have our conversation in the time past. No man living on earth who says, I have never seen since I was born. That man is a liar. And he made God a liar. And the truth is not found in him. We all have seen and fall short of the glory of God. In time past, we were all different things. But God, through his infinite medicine in the appointed time, draw us to himself. And even God today is still in the business of drawing people. And God said, Among whom we have our conversation in time past, the lust of the flesh, the fulfillment of the desire of the flesh, and of the mind, and we are by nature the children of wrath. Even as other, the word, the children of wrath, what does this sound for? People that should suffer his wrath because we did rebel. Satan did rebel from heaven and he was thrown down to the earth. And we did rebel, we should face eternal judgment as Lucifer and his agent did face. But God, who is rich in mercy, God who is rich in mercy, for his great love, Wherewith he loves us. Even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ. And that's why he said to you, By grace are ye saved through faith. That is not of yourself, it is the gift of God. It is not of work, lest any man should boast. You are saved by grace. I am saved by grace. The sanctification of the Lord is upon all those that come to him through grace. Hmm. And he makes us understand in verse 5. He said, when we be dead to sin, have he quickened us together with Christ? By grace are ye saved. And has raised us up together and made us together, made us sit together in heavenly place in Christ. That in the age to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and the kindness towards us through Jesus Christ. Our Lord. Brethren, it doesn't matter our height of deprivation. It doesn't matter where which height we have fallen from. The Lord is quickening you today. The Lord is bringing you together to Himself. He is building you into a glorious church. And it says in verse 9: not of work lest any man should boast. You were not saved because you have done something good for God. You were not saved because you yourself you are a holy son of God who is perfect in love, perfect in glory, perfect in beauty. No, none of this character qualifies any of us. For we were saved by the grace of God. The Bible told us in John 3, 16, it said, For God so loved us, the world, 
that he gave his only begotten son. But whosoever have confidence in him and believe through faith, he will not perish. But that the blessing of God be applied upon him. And the love of God we abide on such a one. And that's why he said, by grace I be saved, true faith. That is not of yourself. It is the gift. And this gift comes from God. This gift does not come from science. This gift does not come from those who want to inherit the world. This gift comes from God. You were saved by grace. And that gift comes from God. And the Bible makes us understand in verse 10, we say, We were his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good work, which has become ordained that we should walk in them. You were saved by grace. Hold on to it. Knowing fully well that no one strives for mystery. Or mastery is not crowned except it strive lawfully. If you don't strive lawfully, you will not be crowned. How can we be sure? Life as a believer means walking by faith, not by sight. So, can we ever know? For sure, that God has indeed rescued us from the dominions of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son He loves. How can we have a fullness of faith in God, which leaves no doubt? In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, let us read. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. What does it say? He said, We walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. Colossians 1, verse 13. Colossians 1, verse 13. What does it say to us? Colossians 1 verse 13 And it said Who hath delivered us From the power of darkness And had translated us Into the kingdom of his Dear son He has delivered us From the power of darkness And has translated us Into the kingdom of his Dear son Now Hebrew the book of Hebrew, chapter 10, verse 22. Hebrew 10, verse 22. What does it say? Let us draw nigh with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our body washed with what? Pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. If God is faithful that has promised, I judge him faithful who will bring it to pass. To God be the glory, great things he has taught us, and greater things he will do in our life. Brethren, let's be wise. There is no foolishness in God. It is only a fool that says in his heart, there is no God. God is not a man that he should lie. In Nobra chapter 23, verse 19. Nobra, let's read Nobra. Nobra 23, verse 19. What does he say? He said, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is God the Son of Man that he should repent. Had he said, shall he not do it? Or then, had he spoken, shall he not make it go? Behold, I have received a commandment to bless, and I have blessed, 
I cannot reverse it. That is God speaking to you. He is just trying to make you understand that the answer lies in believing what God says in his word. The answer lies in believing what God says in his word. Because he made it clear to you that he is not a man that he should lie. He is not the son of man that he can repent. That settles it forever. Because God can never change his mind. It doesn't matter. Man may change. God may change. Society may change. Social system may change. But God does not change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The highest number of days of a man parents on earth is just about 120 years if he lives too long. But what about God? He lives forever. Because he has beat eternity, 120 years is a drop in the bucket. You cannot count his number of days or years and you cannot force him to resign. There is nothing you do on earth that will limit God's ability. Psalm 91 verse 16. Let's read Psalm 91 verse 16. Psalm 91 verse 16. What did God say? With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Job was afflicted. He lost all he has, including his seven sons. But do you know what happened? When God restored him, Job, who was already an old man, God added 140 years to his life. He left and died like in a full old age. And he saw his children's children. He saw his grandchildren and his great-grandchildren. And the Bible said God has added extraordinary beauty to the daughters of Job. This is a man that loved his seven sons in a single day. This is a man that lost his sons in a single day, lost his property, lost all that he has in a flash. But when God restored him, because he is not going to resign. He doesn't change who he is. When he restored him, he satisfied him with long life. He gave him everything he had, double of it. The Lord gave him double of everything he lost. And showed him more than all his salvation. And the Bible says, when the Lord shall rise for his son, even the wrath of man will praise God. The wrath of man will praise God. God is just. And there is no unrighteousness in him. He promised us in Isaiah chapter 45 verse 17. Let's read Isaiah 45 verse 17. Isaiah 45 verse 17. The book of Isaiah. Isaiah 45 and 76. I note the light. I formed the light and I created darkness. I make peace and I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Drop down ye heaven from above in verse 8. And let the skies pour down righteousness. And let the earth open. And let them bring forth salvation. And let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. God is telling you, what are you going to do? Oh, he is the Lord. He said, I form light. The light you used to see. Day and night, the moon, the great body of the sun, and all the evil. He created light, and even the darkness that lives under the earth, he formed it. And he is saying to you now that I will make peace, but I create evil. I, 
the Lord do all these things. He did it all by himself. He doesn't need us. You can't help him. And let me clarify one point. We in a sense does not fight for ourselves. The reason is simple. Because if our kingdom were of this world, we will fight. But because our kingdom is not of this world, we the saints does not fight for ourselves. But the Lord says, even though we do not fight, the saint has authority to execute judgment, even to bring punishment upon the people, to execute upon the habitat of the world, even the judgment that God has written. All the saints of God has this honor. But yet, they will not defend themselves, even at the point of death. Because their kingdom is not of this world. Because there is one that avenged their blood upon the inhabitant of the earth. That is God himself. And he will do it at the last day. The saints will not defend themselves. They will not fight for the war. Because they have a better hope. And we also know for sure that no man has the power to kill us. No man, living or dead, has any power over us. Except the Lord says our job is over. But while we are doing his job, we are protected. And there is nothing any man or woman or demon can do until the job that the Lord has given to his saint are completed. Why is this necessary for the saints to know? For you that is afraid, oh, what will they do to me? I want to serve God, but if I preach his word, they may come after me. Let them come. The Lord resists the proud. He gave more grace to the humble. John 1 verse 12. John 1 verse 12. What does he say? He said, but as many as receive him, to them he gave what? Powers. What people are running up to all corners of the earth, even sacrificing innocent children. All because they want, they want power. Power is all they are looking for. Does the world actually have power? Can the devil give you what he does not have? No. The devil has no power to give you. The Lord says, but as many as receive him, if you want power, just receive God into your life. To you, he will give power to become the sons of God. Even to you that believe in his name, Jesus Christ, you will have uncontrollable power. Power that writes the universe. Power that writes the world. He is the only one that is the source of knowledge and power. The Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. The knowledge of God is understanding itself. The knowledge of God is understanding itself. So what are you looking for in the world? Can the thief give you security? No. When the thief says, I'm going to make you rich, just believe he's going to steal from another man to give to you. The thief cannot give you anything. And the man whom you put your trust in is a thief. He comes to steal your children's life. To steal your blessing. To steal your destination in life and above all to steal your souls away. He is a thief, a liar, and a robber. And there is no hope in anyone that trusts in him. But the Bible makes it clear to you that the thief cometh none, but only for one reason to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And what is he doing today? Taking people's lives. When you said, oh, God is too hard to follow. Let's remove God from our system. Let's remove God from our school. Let's remove God from our lives. Let's remove God from our business. Let's remove God from our finance. He is too hard. His law are too strict. Something else must enter. Because you cannot be neutral in the world. There is no neutrality for any member of this world. You are either for God or you are for darkness. You are either for God or you are from the devil. There is no in-between. There is no middle partition. There is no those who are neither for God or for the devil. There is no such thing. It doesn't exist. The line, the middle walls of partition have been breached. You are either for God or the devil claim you for himself. 
When you remove God from your school, something else will enter. The thief. And the thief will come to kill, to steal, to destroy. Steal your life. Steal your children. Destroy your properties. Damage your reputation. All these things are the work of the thief. The Lord has come today to bring life into that situation. And to give you the life in abundance. Are you ready to receive that life into your soul? So that the thief will no longer have dominion over you. The thief is busy. He covers his face under the cover of darkness. Because he cannot open his face. If any man doeth what is right, he hide not his face. He hides not from the light. He wants to do it in the day so that the light of God might shine. Are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he does not stumble because he received the light of this world. But if any man walk in the light, yet he stumbled because there is no light in him. Romans 8, verse 15. Romans 8 verse 15 says, Nevertheless, brethren, Romans 8 verse 15, it says, Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in this some sort, as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given unto me of God, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentile, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentile might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. And I have therefore whereof I may glory through Jesus Christ, in whose things which pertain to God. So if any man must glory in the earth, let's glorify himself in the Lord. Jesus is not against any man coming after him. If any man come after him, he should deny himself. Pick up his cross, follow his footsteps. You want to be a prophet, you want to be a bishop, you want to be anything. Come, it's not against it. Deny yourself. Deny your emotion. Deny your belief. Deny everything about yourself. Pick up your cross. Follow him. Accept him, he will accept you. Cling to him, he will receive you. He will be a father to you, and you shall be his son. God is not more concerned his promise. Because whatever a man sows, he will surely reap. God made it clear to us. And he said, It is written by Jesus best friend, John, who is often the apostle of love, and he has inspired, he was inspired by God to write a letter specifically answer the question of how we can know for sure that God has come into our lives and is at work in us. John says, I write on these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know you have what? Eternal life. What do you have? Eternal life. If you believe in the name of God, what do you have? Eternal life. But how can we know we are children of God? Why? Because we can point to new things that are happening inside us, around us, that never used to happen in the past. That's God's work. Even though we fall or even fall some days, nevertheless, God works starts in us and He will see us through to completion. John make it clear to us 
In 1 John chapter 1 verse 2. 1 John chapter 1 verse 2. Let's go to the book of 1 John. Chapter 1 verse 2. He says unto us. Sorry, 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3 verse 2. He said, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that whom he shall, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We shall see him as he is. Today, it does not appear what we shall look like when he shall appear. But we know when he appears, we will be like him. Because we will see Christ as Christ is and we will look exactly like him. 5 verse 19, what does he say to us? He said, and we know that we are of God. The whole world lies in wickedness. And in verse 20, and we know that the sons of God is come and has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true and even in his son Jesus Christ that is true God and eternal life. In verse 21, little children, keep yourself from idol. Keep yourself from earthly things, things that entice the eyes. Keep yourself from idol. God is warning of you. Idols does not mean to be an, a modern mortal image keep in one corner for you to worship. It can be said, though you include that. It can be said, it can be false doctrine, false religious. All these are idolatry. God is warning us, keep yourself from it. Remember what the Bible wants us about immorality. You see, for example, every sin that a man commits is without the body. It is outside of the body. But whoever has committed immorality is sin against his own body. And your body is the temple of the living God. And God has said, I will dwell in you. And I will be your God. And you shall be my sons or daughter. Will you not take the temple of God and make it one with the temple of an idol? Are you not going to take the body of Christ and join it together with the body of a harlot? Anybody that become join himself with the body of a harlot, become one with the harlot. And God is asking you, shall you not take me and make me one with the devil? So, let's read the book of Philippians. Philippians 1 verse 6. Philippians 1 verse 6. Say, be confident of this very thing that which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Christ. God has already started working inside you. If you are listening to this message, and the Bible said, He that starts those work is able to complete it. If you only come to Christ, God is not mock concerning His promise. Is what a man sows that he reaps. Because the God I serve is no mock. Brethren, is the Holy Spirit at work in you today? Or can you even see God at work? Is the Holy Spirit who speaks continually comfort? To your heart, assuring you that you are a child of God. It doesn't matter the deprivation you have fallen into, but God is telling you, you are still a child of God. God loves you. He wants to bring you to Himself. He wants to wash you with clean water. He wants to purify you. He wants to sanctify you. With His help, you are already calling God Father. 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. 
1 John chapter 3, verse 24. 1 John 3, 24. What does he say? He said, He that keepeth his commandment dwelleth in him, and in him he is in him. And whereby we know that we abided in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. How do we know that God lives in us? Because we keep his commandments. Because it is impossible for we to keep his commandments. And what is the commandments that God gave to us? God gave us in the laws of Moses ten commandments. But Christ gave us one. And what is it? Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy strength, and with all thy might. On this hand, every other commandment that God has put together for us. But if we keep his commandment, and his commandments are not grievous. This commandment teaches us that God himself is love. First John 4 verse 13. First John 4 13. He said to us, Whereby you know that he dwells in him and he in us because he hath given us his spirit. The Holy Spirit is what convinced us believers that God lives in us. That we are the sons of God. And that's why when we hear Abba Father, the Spirit himself testifies that we are the children of God. Because when even in our life we cannot pray for the things we want, as we're supposed to be able to pray for it. That's why we need the help of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit bear weakness with our spirits and expose to us that we are not just ordinary children, but we are the children of God. Though it does not yet appear what we shall look like, but we know when Christ appears, we will see him as he is, and we will look exactly like him. Let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 8. Romans 8. Verse 16. Romans 8, 16. What does it say? Romans 8, 16. It says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirits that we are the children of God. The Holy Spirit is Himself convincing the Spirit of God in us. Because remember how we became living soul in the first case. In the book of Genesis, God breathed his spirit into us. A man became a living soul. That spirit of God in us is able to bear witness with the spirit of God. And that spirit bearing record with the spirit. Because no man can know the things of man except the spirit of man that lives in him. No man can know the things of God except the spirit of God that lives in him. But if our spirit can be a record with the spirit of God, we know the things that are freely given us of God. And that is the spirit of God is telling us here in, verse, in Romans chapter 8 verse 16 that the spirit is said, bear at weakness with our spirits, which is the spirit of God in us. And that spirit makes us understand we are the children of God. What, does this, what is the symbol of being a child of God? What does this symbolize to us for we to be a child of God? Because we keep measuring the word child of God. What is the significance? As a child of God, that means you are the son of the creator of the universe. The maker of everything that breaths, that has hope, that has life. You are a son of the immortal being. Who alone laid the foundation of the earth, the father of light, in whose hand there is no shadow of turning. The Lord God of hosts, the Lord that is mighty in battle. The Lord who laid the foundation of everything in the universe. You are the son. What manner of man are you supposed to be? Because Christians who don't understand the authority, they get trampled by the devil. What authority do you think you will know? If you know you are the child of God. Being sure means knowing your rights. I know who I am. 
Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? Do you know your identity? Do you know that God has given you a distinct identity? Oh, that's why you as a child of God should be proud of your identity. Be proud of what God has given you. Because God has given you something immense potential, which all the world put together can never have. That's why you should be proud of what God has given you. You should celebrate. That's why I boast of my God. I want everybody to know that my Jesus is alive. He is not dead. He died and rose again the third day. And if God raised him up the third day, he is able to raise me up on the last day. And let's get this assurance. That assurance is what makes me a Christian. The assurance that Christ rose on the third day and that I will also rise like him on when he will return. That is the assurance I have as a believer. Galatians. In the book of Galatians 4, 6. Galatians 4, 6 says, And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of son in your heart, crying every day, Abba, Father. And what is the significance? Because the spirit tells you that you are not just an ordinary servant of God, but you are a son. And a son, therefore, an heir, and a joint heir with Christ. That's why we are not just seated. We are seated in Christ in heavenly places, far above the rulers of the dark forces of this world, far above spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, far above the beggar and the elemental spirits. We are seated in Christ Jesus, far above the rulers of the dark forces of this age. Perhaps you may already discover some of the spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit brings into every believer. When in verse, when a verse in the Bible sort of lights up and speak to you, that Holy Spirit teaching you, you can be sure that He is also starting to guide you in prayer. And when your heart is troubled, when sin draws nigh to tense, you can be sure. That the Holy Spirit is encouraging you to choose the highway of holiness. There is a highway of holiness. There is a highway, a path that the patriarchs dare not tread. That is the highway of holiness. You can choose it today. It's love. God is love. If God is love, anybody that know him must love he that loveth it, knoweth God and abide in God. Because God himself is the father of love. Is love flowing? Flowing in and out of you every day in your life? Do you see the love of God transforming life around you? Do you see the love of God for others? Because if you say you love God whom you have not seen and you hate your brother whom you see, how dwelleth the love of God in you? If you love God, you will also love the brethren. And that is a sure sign that God is in your life. Because God's love, God is love. And he that does not love, have love, or does not love, he himself does not know God. 1 John chapter 4 verse 16. For God is love. And he that loveth knoweth God. And he that loveth not, knoweth not God. Because God himself is love. As you live in God, love, you will find yourself loving him. How do you live in God's love? By loving others. Because you cannot see God. Jesus said, whatever you do to the least of this, my brethren, you did unto me. When I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was tasty, you gave me to drink. When I was in prison, you visited me. He said, therefore, come, enter into the hope of my Father. Now, what about you? Do you still see the love of God flowing through you on your day-to-day -day activity? You see a man who is down. 
You give comfort to the comfortless. You give hope to the hopeless. You guard him that have no strength and you increase his strength. You speak word of wisdom to those who are that cast. That is the symbol of God indwelling in you. God loves speaking through your affairs, your days to day, because God is love. God is not hate. We don't practice hate because there is no foundation in hate in God. God himself is the father of love. He breathes love. He teaches love. And he enables you to love. Because if you come to God, you must believe that God is God. And you must know that he rewards them that seek him diligently. And he makes us understand we expect new love to flood into our family. To bless our parents, our relatives, our friends, our enemies. And if they have abused and neglected you in the past, your husband, wives, will be blessed by the new you that emerge, that emerges, and may even ask what is happening to you. First John chapter five, verse two to three. Let's read. First John chapter five, verse two to three. What does it say about God's love? <laughs> 1 John chapter 5, verse 2 to 3. He said, By this we know that we love that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandments. How can you say you love God and you don't keep his commandments? If you love God, you will keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. God is not telling you to do the impossible. All the commandments of God is telling you not to hurt your neighbor. To treat your neighbor as if they were your own body. To love others. Even as God himself has loved you. That's all God loves teaches. God's commandments are not selfish. They didn't force you to do things that are contrary to law. He never asks you for sacrifice or for bread. All he asks of you is do not harm your brothers. Do not harm your sister. Do to others what you want others to do to you. That is the laws and the prophets. If you don't want people to attack you, don't attack others. If you don't want people to mock at you, don't mock at others. If you don't want people to threaten you, don't threaten others. Do to people what you want them to do to you. This is what the laws and the prophet is saying to you. Are you loving God's people? Before you thought God's people were strange or even worse, now you find a new love for your brothers and sisters growing in your hearts and you prefer to be with them, maybe are wondering what you can do practically to help less fortunate brothers this is god's love at work this is god's love showing his signs in your life and god is saying to you are you saying no to sin before sins grips you and you follow whatever it leads whatever it command may be and you have those cheering you on and they say to you follow his demand and it did deem, and you followed. Now you say, no longer will I accept the tree of life. No longer will I follow the path of deprivation and death. No longer will I walk in the path that leads only to destruction. God is saying to you, you have just chosen the right way. You have just chosen the right way. And you say, I choose God's way. And God's way or no other way. Everyone falls now and then, but you will find easy victory. Over all bad thoughts, over bad habits, over bad language, God is the way. Oh, medical may not be able to treat some psychological issue, but God has the solution. If God has the technology to create us, He has the technology to fix us. It doesn't matter what we're going through. God is saying, I should tell you tonight. That he had the technology to fix you. Oh, you may hate your life right now. 
You want to even think of taking it away. But God said, don't waste that life. You don't know how hard it takes me to create it. I can fix it. God can fix your life. God can fix your solution. God never hated anybody. No matter how dirty you think you are in the eyes of people, but God looks at you and he sees a beloved child of God. He sees you as a symbol of his love, as a symbol of joy. And he says, you come to me today with all your labor and have your love. The day and night you are struggling. How do I take joy away from people? How do I take blessing away from people? These are part of labor. You labor day and night to avoid other people from growing. But God is saying, come to me. Come to me. You that have labored. I have labored so hard trying to do that which is evil. But God is saying, come. I will give you rest. He said, come and lean on me. Learn from me. My yoke is easy. My body is light. Come today. God is promising you rest. There is rest for God people. There is rest for those that come to him. Oh, the rest may not live on the surface of the world as you think it is. But life, death is not the end. Some people say, after all my wicked ways, if I die, it is finished. But that's not true. Death is only the beginning of your journey. Death is not the end. Every man will give account of his deed. The Bible says, every man will give account to him that is ready to judge the living and the dead. The living and the dead will be judged. But God is saying to you, I called you in love. I formed you in love. I purified you in love. And I sanctify you even in love. Come to me. Come and I will end all your labor. Are you ready to end your labor today? Or you prefer your labor life? Or you prefer your sinful and disprivity? There is no joy in sin. All that is in sin is compromise. There is none. All of us have tasted it. Do you think you sin was good? Somebody like me, we ever leave sin and come and follow God? There is nothing good in sin. There is nothing to gain from the hands of the devil. He is a thief. He has come to steal your blessing. He has come to steal your life. He has come to steal your marriage. He has come to steal your academic career. He has come to even steal your psychological mind. He is a thief. But God has come. I have good news for you today. The Lord has come. That he might give life. Life to that situation. And I proclaim life into your dead situation right now. That situation that the doctor tell you, you are irredeemable. Oh, you either do this or you do that. But there is no hope for you. But God is telling you, I should tell you the good news today. There is hope, even for the hopeless. There is hope, even for the hopeless. The Lord said, let the blind that have eyes, let them come. Let the lame that have feet, let them come. The Lord says, even you that is fable, you should get up. Hang up every news. And the Lord says, as you tell to the poor, let them shout with the top of their voice and say they are rich. Let the weak say they are strong. Let the fable say I am a warrior. For the cause of what God has done, he has finished the work for you on the cross of Calvary. Tonight, he is ministering to your heart. And he is proclaiming to you and say, brother, sister, there is hope for the hopeless. There is a place for the oppressed. There is victory for those who are downcast. Come unto me. Come unto me. And I will make you a king and a prince unto my God. And you will reign with him on the earth. Brethren, are you ready to accept Jesus into your life today? To bring him into the plan that he has created for you before the foundation of the world. Are you ready to make him part of your daily activity? Or you still want to estrange yourself? Brethren, if you are ready to come to him today, the Lord says, if you come to me, I will receive you to myself. Jesus has been knocking the doors of your life. No matter how old are you, he has been there since you made challenge. He is knocking, waiting patiently for you to just open the door so that he will come in. He is not Lucifer. He is not the devil. He will not force himself into your life. He will not make law to restrict you. He will only come if you invite him. Today, invite him into your life. And he will come and sup with you. And you will live forever. Brethren, Jesus is knocking. Are you going to keep him waiting? He is knocking to tonight. He is knocking at the door of your heart. And he is asking you, Today is the day of salvation. Today is the appointed time. 
It doesn't matter how far you have gone. The Lord can bring you back. The Lord can save you. You that is listening to me right now, your life has almost come to the end. You have come to the brinks of your life. The Lord said he's calling you. Come. Come. And I know you can hear the voice in your heart right now saying to you, come. Come unto me, you that have labored and are heavily laden. I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Rest is for you. Rest is for you. You that have labored in sickness for more than many years of your life. You make choices when you were young and those choices are affecting your old age. Now you can no longer stand it. Oh, those choices, whenever people speak about it, it hurt your spirit. But God is saying to you, come to me. Come to me today. Come to me and I will have mercy. And I will redeem you. And I will make you a son. And you will be a son to me. And I will be your father. And I will watch all your sins away. Though your sins be as red as scarlet, Though they be as red as prison. I will make them as white as wool. You need to be sure of your salvation. You need to be sure of your salvation. You don't know what days may break tomorrow. You must be faithful to God today. Because the days are evil. You don't know what day will break tomorrow. You don't even know how long you have in your life. Your life is just a vapor before God. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow might be too late. Brethren, this is the time for you to give your life. Give it to Christ and he will take care of you. And he will be a father to you. And you shall be his son. Everyone that fall now and then. But God said you will always find increasing victory over bad thoughts and bad habits, bad language, if you can only come. If you can only come, if any man hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the days of provocation, when your father provoked him in the wilderness, he was robbed 40 years with that nation. Don't end up like the children of Israel. For a journey of 40 days, you spent 40 years in the wilderness. Do you want your life? How many days do you think you have on earth? Do you want to spend your life chasing after vanity? Or you want to spend your few weeks of your life doing what is right once and for all? God is calling you today. And he says, I should tell you, that you should obey him. That you, who are his children, should obey his commandments. Because his commandments are not gracious. We never use to all we have we could not but now that is exact what we want to do the more we obey god the more love he poured into our lives god is saying the more you obey him this love will continue to flow in verse in first john chapter 5 verse 3 what did he say to us he says, for this is love of God, that we keep his commandment, and his commandment are not what? Grievous. His commandment are not what? Grievous. Brethren, this is the teaching the Lord has for you today. He said you must walk with him. If you want to know him better, Amos 3, 3. God is saying something to you in Amos 3, 3. Let us read Amos 3, 3. The book of Amos in the Old Testament. Amos 3 3. Amos 3 3. God says to us, Can two walk together and say they agree? Two cannot walk together and say they agree. You must agree with God so that you can walk with Him. And He said us to agree with God when we walk with Him. And the more, the more you do, the more you know that you have eternal life. And the more confidence you will have in approaching to God, your Father, and to ask Him anything according to His will, you will soon find that if you pray according to what He reveals to you, you will have what you ask for. Answer prayer is short sign that you are firmly established in God's kingdom. Press on. If you were looking for job and the man for interview tell you, sorry, we cannot longer allow interview, will you not beg? Will you not struggle just to enter? Will you not plead with him to just give you a chance to prove yourself? 
Even when you are not sure of getting the job, why not do the same with God? Why not do the same with God? Just tell God, give me some more time. Let me prove myself. And God will give you all the time. Better, press. Press on to know who Jesus really is more and more. He is not asking you to believe like a sheep. To just follow without proving. He said, prove me. He said, prove me. Paul even go further to say behave like the barrier because they were most noble than the Thessalonica. When they hear the word of God, they take it to the drawing board. They search the scripture day and night to prove if what they heard are true. I'm not telling you to take my word for it. Search the scripture for yourself. Prove every word that I tell you. If they be true, follow it. If they be lie, discard my word. And God is telling you, take it. Go to the drawing board. Go and search the scripture. Search. If there is any error you find in this world, write to me. God is telling you, these are the word of God. Repent. Believe the scriptures. If you come to him, the Lord is able to do exceedingly above what you can think, ask, or even imagine according to the power that worketh in us. Do you believe in God? My God can supply all of your needs, not some of it. The journey of faith is not the journey of we. It's not the journey of people must follow me. The journey is I. I can do all things. If Christ strengthens me, can you do all things? Yes, you can. You can do all things if Christ strengthens you. How does Christ strengthen you? He that comes to God will believe that God is God. And he said, the word out of them that diligently seek him. But this is where we're going to end our teaching today. But before we end our teaching, I want to pray for you. I want you to understand that the just shall live by faith. How shall the just live? By faith. That is how the just shall live. If you come to God, you must believe that God is God. And you reward them that diligently seek him. If you say you love God, you must love your brothers also. Because God is love. In him there is no hatred. There is no man that once hated his body. But what does he do? He bathes it with water. He needs it. He flushes it. Do to order what you want others to do to him. This is the laws and the prophets. On this hangs all the doctrine of God. God said a new commandment I gave unto you. That you should love your neighbor as you love yourself. This is the new commandment. And this is commandment. Though it is not new, it's an old commandment you have from the beginning. Every other laws in the scriptures hang on it. The prophet teaches, do to others what you want others to do to you. This is all. You don't want people to abuse you, destroy your children, do all sorts of things. Don't do it to other people's children. Don't try it. Because God is the avenger of all such. The poor may not have a defense in the world, but they have a greater judge. Every authority in the world is suggested to the higher, and the highest of all authority is God himself. He will judge. He is ready to judge. Death is not an escape route. Even if you die, he will wake you up and judge you. God is telling you that at the end of the world, even the sea will bring the death that are there. Even fire will bring the death that are because if he could wake up a man that was dead for four days, that was already smelling, he is able to wake you up from the dead, even if you were dead for 100 years. Don't, God is not more concerned with his promise. If he had the technology to create you, he had the technology to wake you up from the dust, even if you have been rotting the way. God is saying to you today, do not think that suicide is an escape route. Suicide is not an escape route for your sin. Repentance is the only gift that qualifies a man for salvation. Repent and believe the good news, and thou shalt save and thy house. Let us pray. Brethren, as many that receive him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. As many that will believe this word today and receive the Lord Jesus Christ into their life, Lord God, give them power to become sons and daughters of God, to become the children that God has chosen them to be, to become the identity that God has given to them. To become the redeem of the Lord. And the Bible said, let the redeem of the Lord say so. Those who he has redeemed from trouble. Those who he has sanctified 
and washed with his blood. Let those who he has purified say so. The Lord say, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavily laden, I will give you rest. Lord, there is rest for God, people. There is rest for God, people. Father, Lord, today I proclaim your rest upon the disheartened. I proclaim your rest upon the poor. I proclaim your rest upon those who are confused in life. The suicide. I proclaim your rest upon those who are in that situation. In financial needs. They don't know what to do with their life. Their life in, to them, according to them, has come to an end. But God says there is hope for the hopeless. There is joy for the enjoyed. Oh God, thank you because the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because He has anointed me to proclaim good tidings to the maid, to proclaim liberty to those who are captive. Right now, I proclaim the liberty of the Lord upon you. Be free from all your captivity. Be free from infirmities. Be free from sickness. Be free from affliction. Be free from disease. Be free from identity crisis. Be free by the authority in the blood of Jesus. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brethren, you are welcome. This is where we end this Open Heart Fellowship. My name is Missionary Collins. And I invite you to join us next Tuesday by 7 p.m. local time. And God bless you as you participate. We are from CGF Open Heart Fellowship. If you want to set up one in your areas, or you want to have a place where you gather your team together in order to fellowship, you can contact us, our emails, our website is there, you can fill out a form, contact us, and God bless you, and we'll see how to be able to get back to you, and help you set it up, and be able to give you a guidance on what you need to do to set it up in your area. And if you have just accepted Christ into your life as a result of this message, contact us, and we will be glad to hear from you. And we will also send you salvation guide. This is a guide that will convince you about all the things we are teaching you that they came from the scriptures and things you ought to know as a believer that will keep your faith strong and prepare you to be able to save others. God bless you as you participate. Brethren, if you are with us tonight, later we still have another online service where we call Tabby Night, where we pray for all Christians and missionaries around the world that are facing persecution, that are going through terrible things to bring the gospel to every believer. Brethren, this is the night we tarry as believers. Because the Bible said Jesus in the daytime ministers in the temple, and in the night he goes to the Mount of Holy to pray. So that's what we do. We tarry this night. Every last Tuesday of every month is our tarry night. We just study for God for only one hour. The time is from 11.30 p.m. to 12.30 p.m. We only study for one hour with God, and things always happen. And God bless you as you participate. Amen. God bless you. We will see you. And if you are with us on Sunday, it's another brand of our Open House Fellowship, where we use time to understand biblical prophecy. This period we have been focusing on the book of Revelation and our final session is next week, Sunday. And when we are done with the book of, if you have missed any of our articles in the book of Revelation, you can still go to our website at cgfnslogin.app. Then go to the session where you see video and you can watch all the past videos on the book of Revelation. God bless you as you participate. Brethren, I will be happy to see you again by next week as we take part together in this Open House Fellowship. This is the time we break bread and we celebrate the goodness of God in our life. God bless you as you participate. Amen. Our CGF magazine is out. The link is underneath this video. You can click on the link and read through this CGF magazine, Open House. You can even subscribe. You can also send us your offering by assisting the mission in any way you can. But God bless you as you participate. Amen.